ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وخلق منها زوجها وبث من حما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان خير الحديث كتاب كتاب الله واحسن الحدي حدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار وبعد we begin from where we stopped earlier today باذن الله تعالى and to describing the cure or the remedy for the illness that we mentioned which was al hawru ba'd al qawr or increase decrease after increase the changing of the condition of a person from iman to kufr or from taqwa and righteousness to evil doing and misbe uh misbehaving regarding the orders of Allah or from guidance to a going astray and as we said it is upon levels so if an individual was upon istiqama and was upon righteousness and then they go back up on their heels then one fears for that individual su al khatima a evil or bad ending and this was from the characteristics of the salaf that they would fear a bad ending so therefore they would watch their actions and their behavior but what are some of the reasons behind this matter of backing up after having been steadfast of getting misguidance after having had guidance of going astray after one was upon the straight way of becoming someone who is easy for the individual to commit sins when prior to this it was a hard and very rare or at least difficult issue for that individual to fall into sin some of the reasons we'll mention inshallah ta'ala some reasons the first reason da'f al-iman the weakness of a individual's iman and this weakness of iman carries with it all types of diseases and all types of other illnesses from qaswat al-qalb the hardness of the heart wa sahulat al-wuquf al-ma'asi and the easiness of falling into sin and laziness when it comes to doing or establishing obediences and worships directed towards Allah and all obedience and worship is for the purpose of Allah done for the pleasure of Allah but a laziness regarding those matters 
And the absence of being affected by the Qur'an or by Salah and Killa, the small amount of Khawf min Allah, fear from Allah. This is some of the signs of what? Weakness of Iman, which is one of, which is one of the causes for Al-Hur Ba'd Al-Qur. وَكَثْرَةِ الْجِدَالِ A lot of arguing and debate and decision. This is another reason and another illness. And the absence of feeling that one is responsible in front of Allah for what one does. That one will be asked, questioned, in front of Allah for everything that one does. And other forms of this matter. All of this <coughs> many of the reasons that dictates place is al ittiad staying away or being far away from Arufqat Saliha. From righteous companions. وَمَجَارِسِ الْعِلْمِ From the cities of knowledge. وَالْإِنْشِغَالِ بِالدُّنْيَا And being busy with the dunya, the material world. وَطَوَّلْ الْعَمَلِ A long or wide and expansive hope. وَارْتِكَابِ الْمُحَرَّمَاتِ Falling to that and embarking upon that which is haram. So if the iman because of that becomes weak, you find that this, the condition of the individual who has that weak iman will change. From being someone upright, from being someone righteous, to being someone astray, and being someone corrupt, and being someone who is going in the incorrect way. So first and foremost, there must be a treatment. There must be a treatment for this weakness of Iman. And that is by being sincere, having al-ikhlas. Al-ikhlas, as we mentioned in the previous setting or sitting, has its greatest or some of the, the greatest benefits of ikhlas. It, has, it is of paramount importance that the individual be sincere, that the actions be done for Allah wa ta'ala, and Allah alone. And to reflect, another remedy for weakness of Iman, is to reflect upon the Qur'an, reflect upon the meaning of the Qur'an, contemplate the meaning of the Qur'an. Well, khawf min Allah. And to fear Allah wa ta'ala. Fearing Allah wa ta'ala, which is those who know Allah, fear Him the most. To recall the greatness of Allah wa ta'ala. The power of Allah wa ta'ala. That Allah wa ta'ala, if He wanted to destroy the heavens and the earth and all that is between them, its inhabitants, inc- its inhabitants or whatever, all creatures, none could stand in his way. And then when Allah Taala sent destruction to the people of Lut and other narrations of, or ayat or verses that deal with the punishment of other nations, there is narrated that it did not take Allah Taala to send an army. But rather he sent one of his angels. And knowing the greatness and the majesty of the creation, one can appreciate the greatness of Allah Taala, And the fact that one of these angels, he, he has from his earlobe to his shoulder, that which would be, as some have narrated, 700, some have mentioned other numbers, 700 years a flight from this bird to go from the earlobe of this angel to his shoulder. 
So it did not require when Allah Taala I want to punish those of the past, and in particular the people of Lut, that He sent an army, but one angel, who it is stated, lifted the whole valley up on the tip of one of His wings, and to the inhabitants of the heavens could hear the barking of their dogs, turned it around and smashed them and crushed them. This is the might of Allah Taala, and that other nations He sent just some angel to shout, a seha, a shouting, one shouting, left them in their places in a position of prostration from death. That when one reflects upon the greatness of Allah Taala, that Allah Taala, if He willed and if He wanted, can make the air that we breathe unbreathable. Something impossible for us to breathe, or the water that we drink, undrinkable, so that we could not benefit from it, and so on and so forth, thinking about the greatness of Allah Taala and the sheer strength and power of Allah Taala brings about al khawf, fear of Allah Taala. What tawbah min al dhunub? Another means of getting away from the illness of weakness of iman is making toba, returning back to Allah Taala, ta repenting to Allah Taala, ta asking Allah Taala ta for forgiveness, asking Allah Taala ta to forgive toba from the noob, wal maasi from sins and and ill behavior and disobedience to Allah wal khawf min su' al khatima and a fearing of an evil end and to think about death yes to think about death and the hereafter reflection of death changes one's whole world reflection of death takes something that seems difficult and makes it easy. Reflection of death makes one watch one's talk, watch one's hands, watch one's step, watch one's movement and behavior when one reflects upon death. That death will come to each and every one of us. There is no doubt about that. That one day the soul is going to reach the throat and the blood is going to run cold. cold. And the heart is going to stop breathing, and the light that is in the eyes that gives us the ability to have sight is going to be removed, and that there's nothing that we can do, and that when that time pro approaches, and when it happens, there's no delay in it. We can't say, wait a minute, give me a time to say something to my family, give me a moment to straighten up my affairs. No, once the process stops, it ends with us. The soul being removed from our body, and the occurrence, therefore, of that is death. Death. Thinking about death, and thinking about the akhirah, the last day, and all that will happen in the last day, from the punishment of the grave, and before the punishment of the grave, and the tightness of the grave, and the darkness of the grave, and the answer or questioning and test of the two angels and coming out of the grave and being barefooted, naked and uncircumcised and being on the day of judgment where all the multitudes will be gathered until there's no room to move, until the, you can't go forward and you can't go backwards, you can't go to the left and you can't go to the right and some people will be upon their faces and the punishment of Allah Taala will be severe. You will see the children's hair turning gray and the women who have their load dropping their load. You will think that people are drunk but it's not drunkenness but rather the punishment of Allah shall be there. Thinking about the akhirah, the hereafter, the hereafter is a means of dealing with weakness of faith. Another reason why people fall into unrighteousness after they were righteous, weak iman after having strong iman, misguidance after having been guided, 
is at it tiad being far removed from the atmosphere of Iman. The atmosphere of Iman. One has to be, make oneself in al ajwa or al jawa al imani. The atmosphere, the, sometimes they translate jaw as weather, but he means the atmosphere, the environment, the environment of iman. One has to make oneself be in an environment of iman. Those who are far away from the environment of iman, from majara al-ilm, sitting to get knowledge, wal masjid, coming to the masjid, wal Quran, reciting Quran, sitting and reciting Quran, and good companionship or righteous companionship, a good example, and al qudwa righteous example for individuals that one can see who are striving for the after and striving to be righteous. Wa qiyamul layl, making salat at night. Wal adhkar, and remembrance of Allah, and other than that, when people remove themselves from the environment of iman. It leads to backing up. It leads to going upon one's heels. It falling back upon one's heels. It leads to an individual going in the wrong direction and turning away from what is right. So when a person, Muslim, man or woman or child, is removed from righteous brothers or righteous companions or righteous sisters for sisters, for a very long period of time, for instance, traveling, or because of their job, or something of this nature, they lose the environment of Iman. And when they lose the environment of Iman, it weakens them. It weakens them. And when they are weakened, they turn away from that which they was on, or they become weak in their sticking to what they used to stick to of deen. And if this is not caught by the person, it can be a matter of destruction or a means of destruction for that individual. The great Imam of the Sunnah, Hassan al-Basri, al-Hassan al-Basri, rahimullah, used to say, Ikhwanina, our brothers, aghla indana min ahlina are more precious and expensive to us than our families and the wife and the children. Ikhwanana, our brothers, aqla, are more precious, more expensive, more dear to us than our family. Because our family reminds us of dunya. We want this. We need this. Let's go here. Let's go there. Well, what about this? Well, what about that? Reminding us of dunya. But our brothers remind us of the akhirah. That's when you find brothers who are bunkitah and sunnah in the way to Salaf Salih, who fear Allah to Ta'ala in the last day, hope with the meeting of Allah to Ta'ala, is in, involved in obediences. They remind you of what? al akhirah the last day. So, upon, or the hereafter, upon the Muslim is to guard himself and to make sure that he or she strive against the desires of herself, to make sure that they place themselves in atmospheres of Iman. In atmospheres of Iman. And this is something that we have the opportunity to do. First, we have to make the house a house of Iman. Make the bait, bait Muslim. Make the house, the house of a Muslim. This is a very important factor that I, I heard over 15 years ago, Sheikh, Sheikh Abu Bakr Jabir al-Jazairi, Hafizahullah, that man, who has been teaching Tawheed and Tafsir in the Masjid of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam for well over 40 years or more in a series of lectures he did upon the corruption of the society. 
corruption of the society, he dealt with this issue that the house of the Muslim must be the house of a Muslim. The house of the Muslim is not a mal'ab. Not a playground. The house of a Muslim is not a disco. The house of a Muslim is not a cinema. The house of a Muslim is where you find Quran. And he used to say, Hafizahullah, that what is this zeal or want by others to hear the voices of those who sing and so on and so forth, music and all of this, when we have some of the greatest reciters of Quran, the likes of, and we're talking about their recitation. We're referring, alayka san, to their recitation, not necessarily the aqeedah or their minhaj. We're talking about their recitation. For if the individual, when he wanted to listen to something, was concerned about aqeedah and minhaj, he wouldn't listen to anything con- at, 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 that has any connection with music, which is the Qur'an of shaitan. He said, we had the best reciters, the likes of Tablawi, the likes of Abdul Basit, the likes of Husri. And we can go further to those who now we know present day, other than Al-Mishawi, but Al-Hudayfi, and uh, the Ayyimah of the various Masajid, and others. The house of the Muslim should have that plenty, listening to the recitation of Qur'an. In this Qur'an, the house of the Muslim has in it Qur'an, has in it the remembrance of Allah, has in it sajda and ruku, has in it serenity and peace, has in it talking to, uh, talking of good, to such the degree that the Prophet ﷺ said that that or the one who Allah wants good for, and this is from the families, the family, the husband, wife, and children, the one who Allah wants good for, he places between them rahmah. He places between them mercy. O kamaqal alayhi salam. That if there is good in them, they have between them rahmah, a mercy. So that the house becomes after the masjid a refuge from fitna, a refuge from confusion, a refuge from the call to desires, a refuge from that. The house of the Muslim becomes the house of a Muslim. So who is it that comes in our house and says, bring in a television so that you can witness the kuffar and learn how to act from the kuffar and learn how to dress from the kuffar and learn the the ill and sick diseases of the kuffar. Who is it that puts a gun to our head and said, bring in your houses those magazines that impress you about the kuffar? Who is it that brings any of this, that forces us to put down the Qur'an and let it collect dust on a shelf, that forces us not to teach our children or take 15 minutes or half an hour out of the day to teach them to keep the book of Allah or the sunnah of the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam or some wisdom of the salaf of salah. I don't think anyone is forced. Anyone is forced. And if you go further, who is it that has us hooked up to our houses? These issues such as satellite dishes and cable and so on and so forth. And to witness things that maybe even shaitan would be ashamed of. Who is it? No one. So upon the believer is to make, to build, to if you will construct environments of iman. Environments of Iman. And this is a very important matter. Third cause, as he places it here, for the cause of those who had righteousness then becoming unrighteous, who had a difficulty falling to sins, and sins were an exception, and then therefore after that their sins become a rule, and it becomes a habit. And those who had strong Iman and now they have weak Iman, what is referred to, as al-hur ba'd al-qur another reason is the oppressive oppressive oppressiveness of the society that we live in and this is not just the society in the countries of the kuffar but even the societies in muslim countries the oppre- even though it's less no doubt about that even though it's less what he refers to here, he means in general. 
And of course, he's referring first and foremost to the Muslim. If you, when I read these words, you will understand that. So if that's the case with Muslim and Muslim circumstances, what about the one who's surrounded by the oppressive society and what was meant by the oppressive, or the push of the society upon an individual who is sticking to his deen? What about that? The influence of the kuffar, the influence of those who are evil upon this type of individual. He said the societies that we live in, the Muslim who is trying to stick to his deen, is that he mixes with individuals who aren't concerned whether or not they disobey Allah. And in our case, we mix with people or around people who aren't concerned by whether or not they commit shirk and kufr. So what about disobedience? As it says, after, after kufr and shirk, everything else is light. So you can see that he's referring to the Muslim countries First, but we have to focus also and know that if this is the case there, then our condition here is even worse. And so we should pay attention to that. So we mix with individuals who don't be concerned about the commission of sins. One is over here singing the songs uh, and listening and calling to music. The third one is smoking cigarettes or whatever. The fourth one is reading dirty magazines or magazines that have no benefit. The fifth one is one whose tongue is not safe from ghiba, backbiting and cursing and swearing and making a fun and mockery of the believers. So this Muslim who sticks to deen, when he comes to one of these settings or one of, or is invited to Awalima or aqita or whatever, he finds all type of munkarat, all types of evil matters. And he finds conversation taking place about matters of dunya, either about trading or tijara, buying and selling, or about a person's wadifa, particular business or position that they have in the business world, or about wealth, or about uh, acquiring of properties or money or whatever, and the problems of the dunya and others than that until it is, it is a matter of placing into the heart based upon the conversations, based upon what people are talking about, a deep love of dunya in the heart. A deep love of dunya in the heart. So therefore, the hearts become hard. And a person backs up on they're sticking to the deen of Allah. And they back up from their being righteous, righteousness. If this person like this has been oppressed by his environment to this degree, mixing, just the mere mixing in this way affects him. If you add to that, that he also has been tested with some wealth. He got some money to spend. And you add to that, that maybe also one or the other, he may also be tested with a wife or if it's a sister, a brother who has weak iman or children that are like their father if he's weak in iman or like their mother if she's weak in iman. He will not be able to be fixed and firm upon his deed. And he will leave these, those matters and leave being righteousness, righteous, and leave being upright. And then, if you find that he mixes with his kith and kin, and, like I said once again, he's referring to the Muslim and Muslim family. So what about the kuffar? If your family members are kuffar. If he mixes with his kith and kin and his neighbors and his peers and knowledge and so on and so forth, he finds words that are distasteful and mockery, open mockery or hidden mockery. And he finds people who try to advise him to be balanced, that you're going to extreme. Your thobe is too far above your ankle. Why do you have to let your beard grow that much? See the type of nasiha he's given. Yes, the Prophet ﷺ said, Adin and nasiha, but not this type of nasiha. This is the type of nasiha he's given to back up from what he's on, many of them, many of them, he says, or many individuals who are tested like this, back up 
and fall short. And in the end, it is possible for that person to lose the dunya and the akhirah, to lose this world and the hereafter. So this is a cause also. And that's why the first issue of being around people who are salih, who are righteous, and environments that are righteous is of the utmost importance. Because when you begin to mix with those who don't mind smoking cigarettes, even though it's haram, they like to say makruh. It's all you hear all the time. Uh, as one uh, mentioned that he, uh, student of knowledge mentioned that he told one of these individuals he was smoking. And he was looking at him. And he said, don't smoke. So he said, he took, inhaled a big amount into his mouth and brought it out of his nose and said, a makruh yani? And he said, makruh? This is the type of mentality that you're dealing with. It's not makruh, it's haram. So, this is, when you mix with these type of individuals, it can be dangerous. Another issue or reason that people go from corruption, I mean from being correct or upright to corruption, from being righteous to becoming unrighteous, from being strong in their belief to becoming weak in their belief, is da'f al their personal tarbiyah is weak. Their personal education Islamically of themselves and cultivation of themselves is weak. Because if the Muslim don't make sure that and, and watch himself and guide himself and make sure that he cultivates himself and strives against himself, he will fall back upon his heels. There must be times throughout the hours of the day where it's just him and Allah, tabaraka wa ta'ala. Must be times where he takes the time out to be by himself focused on Allah, tabaraka wa ta'ala, making dua, making ibadah, making tasbih, with tahmeed, with tahleel, reflecting on the names and qualities of Allah and calling upon Allah. He must have those times throughout the day. Where are those times where he judges himself? Calls himself to account. As Umar ibn Khattab, Amir al-Mu'mineen, the Farooq of this Ummah used to say, Call yourself to account before you are called to account. Call yourself to account before you are called to account. So the, the believer takes some time out of the day to look What's for himself? What has he done in benefit to himself? Of good deeds and righteousness and whatever? And what has he done that's harmful to himself? That's harmful to himself. And therefore, make a stick far, ask Allah for forgiveness, and make tawbah, repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he must also have some time throughout the day. And this is something that one of the students of knowledge, Sheikh Abu Abdurrahman, Hisham, Arif, Hafizahullah, who teaches Tawheed and Sunnah and the Minhaj Salaf Salih in the Masjid, Bayt al Maqdis, Masjid al Aqsa. Masjid al Aqsa was saying, he asked the brothers at the last uh, convention, Quran and Sunnah Society, he said, How many hours do you read a day? Some book of knowledge. And he said, you must also, in your reading, also take notes. You must get in the habit of writing. For this is keeping in accordance with the sunnah that the Prophet ﷺ established when he said, keep knowledge through writing. Qayyid al-ilm bi kitab. Keep knowledge through writing. So actually, you're physically writing down. And you found that the scholars of the past had books that they call fawa'id, benefits. A daftar. If you will, a notebook for benefits. You hear something beneficial, doesn't have to be under any specific title or anything else. You write down the benefit. Who said this? Who did this? What was the statement? What was that you just said? Umar al Khattab said what? Kada wa kada wa kada. You write it down. So there must be that type of hirs al ilm. And even if it's for a small period of time, a half an hour out the day, 
out of, out, of the, out of the day, a half an hour, what is it done continuously? You will see benefit. You will see benefit. You will see yourself grow and reach a level that you didn't think you was going to reach. Because as they say, a journey of a thousand a million miles begins with a footstep. And little tiny bitty footsteps, you look up and you say, how did I get way down here? Or how did I get way up here? And this is the case with knowledge. So there must be time where an individual uses to achieve Islamic knowledge and to teach it and to review it and to present before himself issues that he may not have learned or knew before. To learn something new. To learn something new. It is incorrect to be upon the same level of deen and knowledge that one was five, six, seven, eight, eleven, twelve years ago. That you find that the brother has not made one move or the sister has not made one move, not learnt one ayah more of Quran, not learnt one more hadith, not learnt one more story of the the Sahaba still can't tell you about the Shira, the life of the Prophet salam, from his birth to his to his death, alayhi salam. Can't tell you that. Don't know the battles that the Prophet salam, took place. Don't know who his wife and children, sons and daughters were. Don't know his uncles and his aunts and his wet nurses. What is this? Yet this is Muhammad ibn Abdullah salam, that you that we say we follow and we don't know. As a matter of fact, it gets worse than that. Many Individuals may, may, may know, know more about an athletic individual who is into athletics, football and basketball, or an individual even worse than that who is an entertainer, a singer or actress or actor, know their life from A to Z, know where they were born, where they went to school, what was they, what were their achievements up on a football field or a basketball court, but doesn't know nothing about Muhammad ibn Abdullah if you said what was his punya, they wouldn't know. I was surprised. I was amazed. And we live in a time of amazement. I was amazed. And we live in a time of amazement. When once in a masjid I gave a khutbah called, Be like Mustafa. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Be like Mustafa. Walk like Mustafa. Talk like Mustafa. Dress like Mustafa. Act like Mustafa. After the khutbah, after salat. There were a young group of children saying, who is Mustafa? Who is Mustafa? And what, where is Mustafa? Not knowing that Mustafa is one of the names of the Prophet and that's who I was referring to. But if you ask them about, about Jordan, or if you ask them worse than that about Pokemon, or if you ask them worse than that about any other filth that has come out of the minds of the kuffar that they have constructed and placed, they know about. Where's the tarbiyah? We always say it's not enough tarbiyah. There's no tarbiyah at all in the majority of cases. Let's not fool ourselves. There's no tarbiyah at all in the majority of cases. If your child wants to be more like that mushrik, like that kafir, dress like him, talk like him, walk like him, be like him, and doesn't know anything about those who you say are the best generation and you make intisad, or connect yourself to in a side of silence, there's no tarbiyah whatsoever. You can't claim there's any tarbiyah. He should want his dog to the calf, cause Umar, cause even Umar wore it that way. Thorn to the calf, to the shin of the leg, cause Abdul Mas'ud was like that. He should want to die on a battlefield and be killed with over a million arrows. Why? Because Saad ibn Abi Waqqas was like that. Because Abu Ubaid ibn Jarrah was like that. Because those of the Salaf were like that. He should want to leave home and seek knowledge. Because Imam Shafi was like that. Imam Ahmad was like that. If this is not happening, if there's not a connection, an emotional tie, a love of the Salaf, and want to follow the Salaf, there is no tarbiyah. There is no tarbiyah. There's not a matter of, you know, we need more tarbiyah. No, it's a matter of, we need to establish some tarbiyah. When it becomes a situation where in the hearts there is a love for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his companions, 
And you know when someone loves someone, for when someone loves someone, someone they want to follow them. Especially among the youth. They like someone, they want to dress like them. Look at the fitness that took place when that Khabib and that Dal and that Kafir, may Allah guide into Islam, that, it, uh, that feminine indi- individual called Michael Jackson, his effect in the 80s on those who were living in Saudi Arabia. I see it myself. Can you imagine someone in the city of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Medina? Can you imagine someone who's in living in the Haramain? Want to move his hands and wear his hair and have a jacket on like Michael Jackson? This is the absence of tarbiyah. And we don't have to go that far. We can come to our own neighborhoods. We can look in our own masjid to the right and to the left and look to how individuals act. And we can see whether or not there's any importance placed on following the way of the Salaf of Salih in reality. In reality, not just in talk. In reality, not just in talk. So it is important that there be, yes, this, this matter of, a, of, of obtaining knowledge and of reflection and of learning new matters and of review. And there should be times where we, to use a tabliki, bid term, sacrifice for da'wah. But the true da'wah, not the innovative da'wah. The true da'wah, the da'wah to kitab wa sunnah, the da'wah to tawheed. There must be times where we have an individual effort of trying to give somebody da'wah. The good that Allah Taala has given us. Knowing the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he said that if you fall out guys upon your hands, one individual is better for you than the red camels which was the most expensive property amongst the Arabs. There should be da'wah. And there should be time for the remembrance of Allah. Yes, time for the remembrance of Allah. Like recitation of Qur'an. All of these for what? So one can guard oneself and preserve oneself and make sure one is sticking to the deen of Allah. Tabaraka wa ta'ala. Another reason of Al-Khur Ba'd Al-Khur, misguided after having guidance, decrease after having increase, righteous, unrighteousness after having been righteous, belittling the sins. Say, oh, that's light, Allah, I'll forget that one. It's the Hanat of the Noble. It's light. And yeah, I don't know, well, is it from the Kabah, it made your sins, or is it from the Sagai, minor sin? The Salaf used to say, don't look at rather the sin. It's major or minor, but look at the greatness of the one you're disobeying. Don't look at rather the sin is major or minor. When they split that into that major and minor, it wasn't for the purpose for individual to take it lightly. Just like when they split bitter up into bitter that is mukaffara and this, uh, that makes you a disbeliever and bitter that's mufasaka or makes you a fasik. It wasn't for the point that bitter is easy. No, kulla bitter than dalala. Every bit is going astray. Similarly, all haram actions must be avoided. As a matter of fact, it is understood that many fires are lit by the smallest pieces of wood. And that a pebble after pebble after pebble, you have a mountain there. And the believer sees his sin as related by Mujahid in Bukhari as a mountain about ready to fall upon him. A mountain about ready to fall upon him. And a hypocrite sees his sin like a fly. All he has to do is use his hand to shoot it away. Looking at matters of sins as light is another reason why people back up after they was going forward. Become unrighteous after they were righteous. Abdullah ibn Ubarak, that great I- imam from the imma of the Salaf, used to say in a piece of poetry, the meaning which is, I saw that sins kill the heart. And the person who commits sin inherits, inherits humiliation if he continues upon those sins. And that leaving sins gives life, life to the heart. And the best thing you can do for yourself is to disobey it. And the best thing you can do for yourself is to disobey yourself. 
The self want many things. The self want temporary satisfaction at the cost of destruction and punishment that it can't bear. The self want, the self want ease and relaxation and a fulfillment of desires on the spot. ASP, as they say. It's ASP? I think I missed the letter. ASAP, as they say. Want it now, instantly. Right? This is how the self is. That's why he says, It's better for yourself to disobey it. And you'll find every time you disobey yourself, you come out better. Every time you disobey your desires, you come out better. Well, I'm glad I didn't do that. You know, I started to do that, but I just dis- things come out better. Wahiru linafsika usyanuha, and the best thing for yourself is to disobey it. So uh, the sins and belittling them, and al israru continues continuing upon the sin. It is of the most important reasons or causes why a person goes back. Look into it clearly. Look with some clarity. Be meticulous in your analysis of it. And you find that many of the individuals that have backed up, they don't have no problem sinning. It's a light thing. Well, what, I'm just listening to some music. Is that, is that from the Kabira? Is that a major sin? I, you know, I thought that was a different opinion among scholars and all this foolishness. It is a matter that is disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and major or minor. One should avoid it. Out of respect for Allah, out of respect for Allah, like in Surah Al-Nuh, would you not have respect for Allah? So this is an important matter. Some of us respect the creation and can see and understand that. I won't step on this line. I respect it. I won't do this. I, you know, I respect it. Well, this is Allah, Tabarak Ta'ala, sanctuary. Those things that he has forbidden. So where is the respect from not falling into that? Ibn Qayyum, Shaykh al-Islam, Rahimahullah Rahmatun Wasiyah, said, From the punishment of the sin is that it weakens one's strength or the heart in his connection and his journey to Allah. We explained before that we are in this world journeying to Allah. This is a journey. And it is as the Prophet Islam described, Mali what dunya, what is me in the dunya? It's like except like a traveler who slept under a tree, took some relaxation, got up and moved on. It's a journey to Allah. And it's a journey back to our country. And our country is the Jannah. Because our father, Adam alayhi salam, came from there. And no matter how many generations or how many people go somewhere else, you come from the country of your father. So you return to that. But as Ibn Qayyim says, we have been oppressed and imprisoned by our enemy, taken prisoners of war by Iblis. Now if we break from that and break from disobedience to Allah and come to obedience to Allah, in our journey to Allah Taala, and having ikhlas and having khawf and having taqwa and having hope and having trust and having submission and so on and so forth of the levels of the journey, then we eventually will get back to our country. No doubt about that. For Allah Taala has explained the sirat, the path. We got the map. We got the directions. We know the zad. Zad and Me'ai, when Ibn Qayyim made that, provision for the after. We got the provisions. It is just a matter of staying upon the path and continually our journey. The sins are blocks and obstacles, and they cause weakness in this journey. Weakness in the journey of the heart to the hereafter. And obstacles, and they may even cut one off from the path. The sin would be Similar to a highway robber coming to you and taking your provision and kicking you off the road and leave you in the middle of the desert. The sin would be similar to a mountain being in your way and you can't move it and you can't get around it. So it weakens it. He says, this obstacle 
and so on, or cuts off one path of sin or weakens one, that if it doesn't do worse than that, which is turn a person all the way around and send him traveling in a totally different direction. Send him traveling in a totally different direction. So the sin is a veil and veils of darkness that stop the individual from achieving his or continuing along his journey. And they can turn around his search. The heart travels to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon this journey with the strength that Allah blesses it with. So if the heart becomes sick from sins and it becomes weak, this strength is gone. And therefore, what is the situation with its ability to continue the journey? Its ability to continue the journey. Very weak. So this is uh, Ibn Qayyim's point. And even though it's said in a very articulate way, you can see that that's the case. You can see that that's the case. While it's the bi dhunub and belittling sins have results, disastrous, dangerous results upon the individual who belittles or looks down or thinks sins are light. The first, or one of the results rather, is that it makes a person increase in sin. It is like a car that says, well, this is like, let me get some more. Let me do some more. Let me fall into some more. Let me acquire some more. And it is that which takes a person far away from the path of Toba. Toba was something close when the sin was first committed. Or when it was a matter of understanding the greatness of sin. And how harmful it is. But when it's made light of Toba, something far away from the mind of the individual. And it caused an individual to have absence of avoiding the people of sin. Begin to say, because the individual is involved in sin, the person is involved in sin, has no problem with another individual who is involved in sin. I'm involved in sin, he's involved in sin. So therefore, they start to hang out with other sinners, the bad crowd, the bad guys. The bad people, the type of fellas you don't want to be around. Talk to them, sit with them, mix with them. Sins can also cause an individual many times, of course, based upon this, to stay away from the people who are righteous. I don't want to be around the brothers who are righteous. I don't want to see right now the brothers who have taqwa. This alone is one of the biggest or greatest means of a person going astray after at once before they were on the straight path. Another issue of the issues or reasons of al-hur ba'd al unrighteousness after being righteous, being corrupt after having been one who was upright, is al-ghurur. Being delusioned or having self-delusion. Self-delusion. wal ajab Astonishment or amazement with oneself. This is you found, find among many of those who believe that they're sticking to Kitab or Sunnah. Who believe that they're righteous. They have this khurur and they have this ajab. And everyone can understand the difference between an illusion and a delusion. An illusion is when you see something you know it's not real. A delusion is that you believe something be real when it's not. So they believe that they have this righteousness, this greatness. Sometimes they call this holier than thou attitude. And this ujub, this astonishment with oneself. He said, you find this a lot. He said, no doubt that attending the sittings of knowledge and being around righteous people show that a person has some good within them. But if this self-delusion and astonishment and astonishment enters upon a person, it has a, the effect of making this person think that they're perfect or that they're more complete than others. And therefore, he doesn't feel a need to increase his effort. I'm doing well. 
doing fine. I'm righteous. No need to do any more. I attend circles of knowledge. Those other people don't. I'm in the masjid. Other people aren't. So this is this type of ghurur or amazement. So therefore, this individual doesn't try to do more khayr. Doesn't try to do more righteous action. When a person becomes astonished with oneself, there comes away from his heart the fear of a bad ending. And he feels safe from being led astray after having guidance. And this is from a sign of the weakness of his self. And it is of one of the means of a person turning away and going the wrong direction and getting misguided after having guidance. And when one becomes amazed and astonished with oneself, he begins to become busy with the faults of others. And he doesn't try to deal with the faults of himself. And because the self needs to be dealt with, so therefore this horror must be dealt with. This horror, this self-delusion, this amazement, I'm more righteous, I'm more good, I'm more istikama, I'm more in. A safety from the Lord. How can you feel, how can one feel safe from being led astray? There are two matters and both of them are kufa. One of them is to lose hope of the mercy of Allah, to give up. The other is to feel safe from the plotting of Allah. To be, feel safe from Allah Taala punishing one for one's in one misdeeds. Safe. That is also kufr. It's kufr. So this has to be understood also. This has to be dealt with. How do you deal with many righteous matters or morals that you that one wants to obtain? It is by doing the opposite of it. If one finds themselves selfish, it is for them to become generous. If one finds himself arrogant, it's for them to be humble. Similarly, in this way, he has to have humility, he has to have fear, and he has to work on the correction of his faults before starting with anyone else. Work on his faults before starting with his wife. Work up on his fault before starting with his children. Work up on his fault before starting with this brother and that brother and this community and that community. Islah. Start with oneself first. And tawbah. Repenting to Allah. Tabaraka wa ta'ala. Al-Muhim. I try to uh, wrap it up. Uh, another reason why people go astray after having been upon guidance, whether it be going from sunnah to bid'ah, or rather going from righteousness to sins, is their companions, a sadiq or a sahib, their companions. The people you sit with has its effect, has an effect upon the person's path and behavior. There's no doubt about that. If the friend that one is with looks at bad films or looks at bad magazines or listens to music, then that will have effect upon the one who is a companion with him. These type of mukhalafat, alayhi salam, or matters that are disobedient will comes in between two companions and if the companion doesn't forbid it, but rather he lets that slide and lets this one slide, then pretty soon it has an effect upon him. Has an effect upon him. And therefore, you could have a companion also, less, of course this is the lesser, lesser of an evil than that, but one who's short in his ibadah. He sees him short in his worship, so he stops doing sunan. He doesn't do sunan ratiba. He stopped doing sunnah This is what? The effect of what? Companionship. And it can go to such a level that if your friend backs up and your companion backs up, you back up. You back up. So therefore, la bud min khtiyar al-rafiq al-salih. He must choose a righteous companion. The one who will help one be upon obedience to Allah Ta'ala. Like it says in the hadith, the man is upon the deen of his friend. So look to who you befriend. And there are many other reasons that lead to this misguidance after having guidance. 
Weak iman, I have to have a strong iman. And sometimes, as we said, bid'ah, I have to have him been on sunnah. And kufr and shirk, I have to have him been on iman and tawheed. One of it is having weakness in one's strength of sticking. And not having the patience to deal with the difficulty. For one upon the deen of Allah will be tested. And there will be storms of fitna. The fitna of desires and the fitna of doubts. There will be good days. There will be ga- uh, happy days. There will be nice situations. And there will be circumstances that are difficult. This requires an, an, a, 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 a person with strength and steadfastness and sticky and patience to deal with those type of matters. Another matter we mentioned is total amal. Having this, this, this viewpoint that you're going to live a long time when death is closer than the shoelaces. Well, being extreme is another reason why some people, you find them extreme. Overnight, I got, he has a lit, yeah. Overnight, he's told to his ankle. Overnight, he has, he's on sunnah. Overnight, he's kitab. Overnight, he's books of Akita. Overnight, overnight, overnight. He's so hard upon the people and extreme. And then the next day, or two days later, or a year later, he doesn't have a beard. He doesn't even come to masjid. Gulu. Extreme. And be shadid upon the self, placing upon one's shoulder what one cannot bear. More than one cannot bear. Forgetting the fact that Allah Ta'ala does not place a burden upon a soul more than it can bear. Some of us make the deen hard. Some of us make it extreme. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would not have the choice between two matters. Both of them being halal. Except he would choose the what? The easy. We act as if we can somehow be better than Mustafa Alayhi Salaam. I want the hardest. This is not the way. And this leads to a person backing up. Because the self can only take so much. So therefore, after the year of this, this, this extremeness, one comes to a point and says, wait, what, is, what am I doing? And backs up from everything. Also, Amrad al the illnesses of the heart, Wa'afat al-Lisan, and the Mistakes of the tongue and the illness of the heart are many. Ria to be seen, kibber, pride, so on and so forth. Afat lisan, or oh, uh, sicknesses of the tongue like riba, backbiting, namima, slander, and so on and so forth. Lying and cursing and all of this. These are also means that lead to what? A person being unrighteous after they were righteous. Another reason he says, da'fa shakhsiyya. That the person with himself has a weak personality and there finds himself always following other personalities. Since he has a weakness in personalities, his personality is Islamic, personality is weak, he finds himself have following other ashkas, other personalities. This will lead eventually also to a person turning away after they were straight or be misguided after they had guidance. Now, so there are many reasons. Uh, and he mentions some of the ways or the remedies, and we must mention a few of them just to make it balanced, inshallah. Most important issue, he says, is al ikhlas, sincerity, was sit and truthfulness with Allah. This is the best means of achieving istiqamah, uprightness, and salah. Ibn Qayyim, rahimahullah, says, one finds difficulty to leave that which one is used to, and what is one habit? Huh? The one who leaves it for other than Allah. But the one who leaves matters of disobedience and sins, and those things that are wrong for Allah, and leaves them truthfully, sincerely for Allah, he only finds difficulty in the beginning of leaving it. And this is so Allah tests him to see if he's truthful or not, or he's lying. Huh? He wants to leave the sin that he's been doing. Said, I'm sincere to Allah. Allah Taala may give him the opportunity and test him. And he'll find some difficulty at first, and this is to see that if he's truthful, if he's truthful, he'll fight himself. He'll fight his desires. He'll strive to go against it. And if he's lying, that won't be the case. Say he said he will find difficulty, but the one who's patient upon this difficulty, khalil and a little, Allah Taala will place in place of that desire for that sin. A sweetness and a love 
and a deliciousness for that which is right. That which is good. And this has been narrated in many ahadith. That he who leaves looking at that which is haram, Allah will give him uh, some of the hadith said courage. And Allah will give him strength. And that's why you find those who have the most courage and the most strength is those who turn their eyes and keep their eyes away from that which Allah has forbidden. He who leaves something for Allah, Allah will give him better than that. Man taraka lillah, Allah gives him better than that. All the time. Leave this sin, Allah will give a righteous deed better than that. Of course, it's not, I mean, the sin itself, of course, it's, the righteous is better. But it means Allah will replace it with something that you could not have imagined. Something that you could not have imagined. But it has to be what? Sabr. Patience. And it has to be a willing to go through the examination and the test. Second matter, as he mentioned before, Al-Khawf min su al-Khatima. Al-Khawf min su al-Khatima. Fear of a bad ending. The mu'min as sadiq the true believer, must fear a bad ending. And stay away from anything that will lead to that. Did you not hear that Yusuf salam said, Tawafani Musliman. Oh Allah caused me to die as a Muslim. Walhikni bis salihin. And place me with the righteous. And all the prophets of Allah were making dua like that. They were making dua for what? For a good ending. That they die upon Islam. And Sufyan authority, that great imam, that great Sheikh of Islam, Sufyan Athori, rahimahullah, cried one night, cried one night all the way to morning. You think I'm crying in something? Cry here 15 minutes, there a half hour. Cried all the way from night to morning. When he was asked, why are you crying? Or why did you cry? He said, I cried from having an evil end. From the fear of having an evil end. Huh? This is why he cried. And called Al Imam Barbahari, the great Imam Al Barbahari, the people, the one of Sharh Sunnah, radiallahu anhu ardahu, wa'alam, he said, you must know that it is upon this, is a must upon the servant that he has with him a shafaqah. Abadan, a mercy and a fear connected at all times. Because he doesn't know upon what he will die. He doesn't know how his life will end. And he doesn't know in what condition he will meet Allah Azza wa Jal. But, therefore he should be about doing what? Every deed of good he can. Every deed of good he can. Uh, another help in this regard is to continuously do the righteous action. Don't start one action, a righteous action, then stop. Start Qiyam and Layl or Tahajjit and then stop. Start memorizing the Quran and then stop. Very most love deeds to Allah is those which are continuous even if they're a small amount. Also, taking certain times to hear admonition. Mo'idha. Death. The hereafter, the grave. Not every day. That's not the way of the Salaf Salah. But every so often, as the Muslim said, the Prophet Islam used to choose times to give us more either. Because he did do it every day, fearing that we'd become bored with it. And there are other means of making sure or hoping, because no one can make sure except Allah, but hoping that one will be upon istiqama. This is just some of what we were able to mention in this sitting. We hope that it benefits us and it benefits all who listen. And we ask Allah to, Ta'ala to make it sincerely for his face, not having any, any riya or sum'ah. Very Allah is able to do all that. Wa sallallahu ala nabiyyana Muhammad wa ala alihi wa ashabi ajma'in wa jazakum khair. If there are a few questions, we will take them inshallah.